Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Albrecht Payton. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm okay. As good as I can be, trying to be, yeah. I understand. We'll take it slow. Try to talk directly into the microphone if you can. Okay. And if, if it's more comfortable for you to take the mask off, that's okay. okay. Whatever makes you comfortable, all right? Yeah. But we'll just take it step by step. Okay. I'm gonna start with some questions about your background. Okay. Can you tell the jury how old you are? Um, I am 20 years old. And what city do you live in? I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. How far did you go in school? Um, 12th grade. And are you working right now? Yeah, I am. And what do you do for work? Um, I work at a gas station. And Sorry, I work at a gas station. Thank you. Do you know Dante Wright? I do. And how did you come to know Dante Wright? Um, through social media, through Facebook. Did you have a, a relationship with Dante Wright? Yes. And what type of relationship was that? Um, it was just like a, a beginning like of a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. And you said it was the beginning of a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Had you just gotten to know him or meet him recently? Yeah. Um, and when I say recently, that was shortly before April 11th of this year? Yes. About how long before that had you met him? Um, we've talked for about like two, three weeks. So you were just beginning this relationship? Yes. So you didn't have an order for protection or any court order against him, did you? No. You were just meeting him and just getting to know him, is that right? Exactly. So I'm going to direct your attention to April 11th of this year, all right? And I'm going to ask you some questions about that day. Had Dante Wright stayed at your place uh, the night before April 11th? I believe so, yeah. And at some point on April 11th, did you go with him to his parents' house? Yes, I did. Did you wait in the car when he went inside? Yes, I did. And was there anyone else in the car with you at that time? No, there was not. And what car was it that you were in with him? It was a white car. I'm not familiar with like car brands or names. Was it Dante's car? It was Dante's car. And then after you waited in the car, um, did you leave with him in that car from his parents' house? Yes. And who was driving? Dante was driving. And where were you sitting? I was in the passenger seat. And that's the front passenger seat? Yes. Now, at some point while you were driving in that white car with Dante, right? Did you get pulled over by the police? Yes, we did. Did you learn why you were pulled over? I think it was multiple reasons. Like, it was the air fresheners and the tabs and the warrant. And did you hear Dante Wright interact with the police when you guys were pulled over? Um, yeah, like, kind of. I remember mostly him just talking on the phone with his mom and then just telling me to hang up. Okay. So was there a point in time where the officer who had pulled you over stepped away from the white car that you were in? Yes. And then did the officers come back at some point? Yes. Now, in that car that you were in, this, this white car, um, was there a gun in that car or any weapon of any kind? No. I'll rephrase, Your Honor. Yes. Do you know if there was a gun or a weapon of any kind in that car? No. So there was no weapon in that car? No, there was not. Do you know if Dante had a gun or a weapon on his body or care what, that he was carrying a gun that day? He was not. Okay. So at some point you said the officer left walked away, and then came back to that white car that you were in. What happened when the officers came back to that white car? Um, when they came back, um, from what I can remember, he, uh, he just kept asking them 
Like they would ask him to step out the car and he kept asking them like why? Like why do you want me to step out the car? He kept asking what he did. And they kept telling them that they, they wouldn't tell him until he got out the car. So like eventually after him just keep kept asking why and like not. So then he stepped out the car. And how were you feeling while this was going on? Um, I'm really nervous and scared. I don't really have a good past with police, so I, every time I, I encounter, I just get nervous. So you were nervous and scared. How was Dante behaving? Was how how did he appear to be feeling during that interaction? He was really scared. Like I've never seen him like that before. Because if you know Dante, like this. It's just really happy, it's positive, and you can't really be like sad or depressed or angry or mad around him. And like, he was just like, just so nervous and flustered, and I could tell he was just scared, and he just, okay. I don't know. I'm gonna stop you right there for just one sec. Take your time, if you need a tissue, go ahead. So it sounds like, you're describing Dante as being nervous and scared. And take a deep breath, and take it slow, but I'm gonna ask you to describe for the jury, when you said that they, the police asked Dante to step out of the car, what happened next? Um, when he stepped out of the car, I, I don't remember too much of the scuffling. I mean, I've seen the, the video footage, you know, when it first came out, like months ago, but um, like mem memory wise, I don't remember the scuffling. I just remember after. So you said you remember after. Um, and you had described just before this that you said that they asked him to put down the phone, yeah. something like that. What do you remember about that? Because like, his mom, he was trying to ask her if like he had any okay. warrants or if he was in trouble, and she kept telling him no. All right, one second. Was... I'm just going to stop you right there. Sorry. When he was stepping out of the car, yeah. what do you remember happening with that phone? Did he have a phone in his hand? Oh, no. He, they kept telling him to put it down and put it down, and he dropped it, so okay. he can get out. And... So he put down the phone to get out of the car? Yeah. Did he then get out of the car? Yes. And then you said you didn't remember much of the scuffling. What do you remember happening next? I just remember like hearing like just like the 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 boom, the bang of the gun, and then I remember just looking up and seeing like another white car, just just like coming directly towards us. Like I remember lifting up my head real quick and just boom and. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell if it was before or after, but I just remember like, trying to, trying to just get him up. Like, I was, I was the only one who had everybody there. I was trying to help him. And I was trying to push on his chest um, and call his name. And he wasn't answering me. He was just, um, Gasp me. <laughs> like just, 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 just take breaths of air. So, <laughs> and then I just remember being walked out All of right. like a car and being escorted. Hang on one second. I'm gonna stop you right there. Sorry. I know it's tough. So just take a minute, and we'll just take it piece by piece, okay? Okay. So it sounds like you said you remember seeing a car, another car. Is that what you? Or describing that you yeah. saw another car, um, and then you said you were pressing on his chest. Is that what you like said? His like stomach area, like probably like right here. Is, okay. I didn't know exactly where he got shot. So. Okay. So let's just take that part step by step. Okay. So you said you remember hearing a bang or something like that. And then after that, you saw another car, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, were you looking at Dante at that point? Yeah. And so what did you see when you looked at Dante, right? 
I'm just really happy, like fast. Like I remember just looking at, it wasn't really him, but like it was kind of like him, but like the floor, like I could, like I could see like, his hands were on the wheel and that's why I was confused. And then I looked up at the car. <laughs> and you looked up and you saw a car. What happened at that point when you saw the car? We hit the car. So the car crashed, is that right? Yes. And then what did you do? You were describing you were putting your hands on, on Dante, on Mr. Wright. Can you describe that part, please? Uh, I was, I know, I, I took him, I took my belt off and I just grabbed like whatever was in the car. I don't remember if it was a sweater and a towel or a blanket or something. I just grabbed whatever it was. And, Put it on his chest, like, like you know, you see in movies and TV shows. And I didn't know what to do, so I just, I just put my hands over his like, chest and I just tried to hold it and I was just trying to scream his name and I was just trying to have him talk to me and just kept saying Dante, like Dante, like just, just say something, please, like just talk to me. <laughs> And he just couldn't, like, I, I know he tried, like, I know he wanted to. Because I replay that image in my head daily. <laughs> it's like, Okay, I'm going to stop you right there for just one second. Take a breath. <coughs> if you need a tissue, feel free. And if you need a break, you just let me know, all right? Okay, yeah. You said that you were pushing on his chest because you had seen something like that on TV. You were, were you trying to stop the bleeding? Yeah. And you were trying to talk to him at that point, is that right? What, what was he doing? Was he... He what, was just like, I don't want to like demonstrate like how he was, but he just had his arms folded, kind of, and he's just like, just gasping. <laughs> just like, I, I, he just wasn't saying anything. So he I was trying to get him to like say a, a word at least or something. So I knew he had a chance of being okay, but he just wasn't saying anything. So you're. But he was alive. So I, I, I didn't think he would be was alive. Okay. So you're you're describing that he was gasping. Yeah. You were trying to get him to respond to you. Yeah. But he couldn't say any words. Is that right? Yeah. And you were trying to put pressure yes. on him, is that right? Yes. At some point, did that stop, the gasping stop and the moving stop? Um, I don't remember. I think I was pulled out of the car. I don't recall. Okay. Um, but the car <coughs> that you were in came to a stop at some point, is that right? Yes. Okay. And um, how was Dante... Mr. Wright, how was he positioned in the car? Was he leaning back or leaning forward? Do you remember? He was leaning back. He was like this. That's what I remember. Okay. He was leaning back. And at no point, at any point, were you able to get him to respond to you or move or get up? Unfortunately, no, I was not. Okay. Now, while you were in that car uh, with Dante, with Mr. Wright, did, was yeah. there another call? Was there a video call that came through? Yeah. Tell the jury about that. It was his mom. And what happened during that call? <laughs> Yeah, it was a video call. She was asking what happened. I, just, I know I was delirious. I was just screaming like they just shot him. They shot him. And then I pointed the camera on him. And I was so sorry. And I did that. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll take a minute. We'll take a minute. Oh yeah, I just pointed the camera at him. 
that it isn't shocking. I apologize, but um, yeah. Okay, hang on right there, just so I make sure that I'm clear about what you're saying. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. Take a deep breath. You said that you pointed the camera at him. Yeah. And it was his mom on the phone. Yes. And you were saying you were just sorry that you did that? Yes. And why are you sorry that you did that? <laughs> I didn't, no, 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 mom should have to see, see that she said that on her phone, on a video call. It just, I don't know, like, I don't know how my, my mom felt when she couldn't find me for hours afterwards. So I just, I just know that I hurt her by doing that. Okay, so I hear you saying that no mom should see her son dead on the phone and you know that that hurt her and you apologize just, for that? Yeah, just dead, period, but yeah. All right. Take a moment. After that call, was that when you got out of the car? Um... I don't recall. Um, I do remember getting out of the car at some point, though. Okay. Your Honor, at this point, I would offer Exhibit 166 and 167. I don't believe there's any objection. Could you identify these? Those are photographs of the white Buick. Is there an objection to those exhibits? Those exhibits will be admitted into evidence and you may publish. Thank you. We'll start with 160. Actually, could we put 166 and 167 next to each other on the screen, please? Emotional testimony. We are going to step aside, take a quick break, be right back after this. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Quick update, Missouri, another jury question. They asked for clarification of a jury instruction. Specifically, they want uh, a definition of acted together with or aided. The judge said it's in the instructions, sent them back. Now let's get back into Minneapolis uh, and this emotional testimony from the girlfriend of Dante Wright. They're about to play a video of her, um, body camera video right after the accident, after the incident. Inside. All right, you want to you search her and stuff? Okay. Can I lean on the front? Huh? Take that down. Just. Were you explaining to the officer at that point that there was no one else in the car other than you and Dante? Yes. And we talked a little bit about your your injuries. How were you feeling at this point when you were coming out of that car? Um, I just. I couldn't really feel anything. Um, I just remember my jaw, like I just remember walking and my blood was just spilling from my mouth. <laughs> and did paramedics take you to the hospital after that? Um, yes, I was told that right away, but yes. And what were the injuries that you learned about that you had? You learned after the fact what your injuries were. What were those injuries? Um, I had a, a lacerated uh, lip, so uh, I have a scar. Uh, I had stitches. It went all the way through. Um, I don't know what happened, but the whole all the way through my lip. Um, 
stitches in my ear and a fractured jaw. Uh, I had wires on my jaw for about six weeks, maybe a little more. And uh, I s sustained a, like a concussion and yeah. So you said you had a laceration, a concussion, a broken jaw, and that your broken jaw was wired shut for some period of time, is that right? Yeah. Did you have to have surgery as well? I did. Um, at this point, Your Honor, I would offer exhibits 30 and 31. Those are the uh, photos of the injuries. Okay. Um, 30 and 31 will be admitted over defense objection. And we would publish exhibit 30 at this time. All right, I've put on the screen uh, exhibit 30. Can you just describe what's shown here? Uh, that is my left ear. Uh, and after. You, sorry, you said that you had to have something done to your left ear. Can you uh, explain that? Yeah, that is my left uh, lacerated ear. Uh, so they had to stitch somewhere in, like, can I write on it or no? You can use, there should be actually a little pen I style. I have to get stitches like right here in that area. Okay. And then we'll publish exhibit 31, please. What's shown in exhibit 31? That's my job. It's my lip too. Where, uh, I, I believe I probably fit it or something. I don't know, but it, it, that's the gigantic hole. So you said you had a hole in your lip and a broken jaw. Yeah. Is this what you looked like the day of this incident on April 11th? Yes. Okay. Have you had uh, long-term impacts from that broken jaw or the injuries that you suffered? Yeah. Can you describe what that has been like to the jury, please? Um, so my jaw, uh, it's weird, it's this way, so I've had to get used to a whole new jaw. Um, as you can see, like when I like, open my mouth or whatever, it goes to a, a certain way. And um, just like when I sleep, just weird, like, I mean, it's hard to explain it. My teeth will just not be aligned and it'll feel like I'm biting just hard a lot. So it's, it's, it's different, but... Uh, Did you have pain for quite some time? Said what? Sorry. Did you experience pain for a while? Yes. And were you given uh, pain medications both on this day and afterward to treat your pain? Um, no, just once after my surgery. After your surgery? Yes. Okay. Um, but the paramedics, did they also treat you on your way? I, I, I believe so, yes. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, we're going to step aside, take a break. Uh, cross examination is next. Stay with us. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Let's get you back into the courtroom up in Hennepin County, Minnesota. Elena Albrecht Payton is the girlfriend of Dante Wright. She's being cross examined by the defense attorney, Earl Gray, doing the questioning. Uh, they just went to a quick sidebar, and um, they're breaking that up with quick objection, and um, now Earl Gray going back to the podium to resume his question. When Dante Wright was smoking the marijuana, mm -hmm. was that in your home? Yes. And were you smoking marijuana too? Yes. And the I believe the evidence previously was that he, um, and I might be incorrect on this, that he arrived at his mother's house at about 11. Yeah. So, and if you got up at approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. you and him smoked some marijuana uh, before he went out to his mother's, correct? So I wasn't sure about the 10, but no, I, it was just an estimate, but yes. 
Okay. And on the way out there, did you smoke any marijuana in his automobile? No. It was just in your house? Yeah. Well, on the way to his mother's house, yes. Okay. No, we have we didn't smoke in. Like, it was in my house, but on the way to his mother's house, no, not in the car. Okay, but you smoked it at your, at your mother's house. I'm oh, sorry, yes. And was it... Um, one joint, or did you smoke two joints, or did you? <laughs> one. One? Yeah. Did you split it? We well, yeah, together. We smoked it together, yes. And who supplied it, you or him? Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. The objection is sustained. Okay. And did you, uh, after smoking this marijuana, feel that it had affected you at all? Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, um, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Um, but thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, no, not any okay. disabling well, effects, no. You had observed Mr. Wright prior to this for at least a week or two. Um, could you tell whether or not the marijuana that he had smoked had affected him at all? It did not. You could tell that? Yeah. Yes. And. Why were you going out to his mother's? Do you remember that? Um, he just wanted to go see his mom. I don't remember specifically what the reason was. I just, we were always together, so. Did uh, oh, yeah. you meet his mom prior to that time at all? Not personally, no. And you stayed in the vehicle yes. while he went in the house that morning, correct? Yes. And why was that? Because um, like I've, I've never seen his son or his mom, so like I just stayed in the car. I didn't want to intrude. Okay, he didn't want to introduce you to intrude. his Intrude. I didn't want to intrude. Intrude? Yes. And you had two phones that day, fair statement? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to answer yes or no. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. And one phone was for you? Yes. And I'm not quite sure I understand what the other phone was used for. He said that what the other phone was used for, it was just both my phones. Like they were just phones. Okay, what? Yeah. Why, why did you have two phones? I just had two phones. No real reason? Yeah, I didn't use it for them for specific reasons. I just had two of them. And Dante did not have a phone that morning? He did have a phone. Okay, well, when he called his mother, mm -hmm. he used your phone, correct? Yeah. Do you know why? Because his phone wasn't working. I, yeah, I gave him my Xfinity. Now, after, we'll withdraw that question. I believe he testified, and I apologize if I didn't quite catch it right, because it was, besides being old and hard of hearing a little bit, yeah. I couldn't understand what you're saying because you're crying. Yeah. But I believe you said that um, Dante drove down the road after he was shot. Is that right? He did not drive down the road. His hands were not on the wheel. Okay. His, his Only his foot was on the gas. Well, was his hands on the wheel in the beginning? His hands were never on the wheel. And how do you, re do you remember that specifically? I remember that specifically. Okay, and did he turn on the vehicle? The vehicle was never off. Are you sure of that? I don't think it was, because how would it have just started if it was never? You um, need So, do you remember specifically whether or not the vehicle was on or off? Um, I do not. Well, Your Honor, I'm cross-examining the witness. All right, excuse me. You may answer. I do not recall specifically okay. Thank that. Thank you. And the injuries you received, mm -hmm. which were serious, yes. right? Yes. 
um, were caused by the car accident. Yes. You didn't receive any injuries from any other incident, correct? No. And you mentioned on direct examination, I believe you said that you did not have a good past with police. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, yeah. sorry, I'm so sorry yeah. I keep doing that. I'm so sorry, yeah. yes. What did you mean by that? Objection, Your Honor, irrelevant. Um, I'm going to let you answer. I mean, I think she testified yeah. to that. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my father was, uh, he is, um, well, an ex criminal, I don't know what you would call that, but we've had encounters with the law enforcement before, and most times they were never good whenever it was around my dad, so it was just growing up seeing, you know, just negative encounters with the police. Between your father and the police? Yes. Not between you and the police? No. I was and, did you, and did you live with your father after you were 12 years old? Um, no. You lived with your godmother? I lived with my mother. And where was that? I lived with my mother at 12 years old. I was on the east side of St. Paul. When this incident happened, your mother was living up north. Is that a fair statement? That is correct. And you're living down here with your godmother? Correct. And that would be in St. Paul? Yes. And, um... How long had you lived with her? Um, I've lived with her since I was about 14. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any redirect? Quickly, Your Honor. Yes. more questions. As far as you know, the car was never turned off. Is that right? Object to that is leading, Your Honor. Your Honor, she he asked. Answered. The question is leading. He asked multiple times. All I'd right. like to clarify. Okay. Counsel, you're going to have to rephrase your question. I will rephrase. As far as your memory goes, yeah. was the car off or on during the entire time? Um, I do not recall, but I, I do believe that it was on, no, but I do not recall. I'm not responsive to the last right. part of that. She said she didn't remember. Okay. That's her testimony. Counsel, one word objections, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Are there parts of this incident that are difficult to recall? Yes, yes, there are. And why is that? Um, because I sustained a severe concussion and a little bit of a breakdown afterwards. Was this a traumatic incident for you? Yes. Your boyfriend was shot right in front of you, right? Yes. Object to that as leading and will it be stricken, Your Honor? Oh. It's obviously not. Okay, the objection is overruled. I'll let the answer stand. Thank you, Your Honor. Based on your memory today, what was the situation with the car when you were pulled over? Objected that was a vague question. I don't, what was the situation? I don't know Would you like to rephrase that? I will that rephrase. Pencil. Based on your best recollection, was the car off or on and running during your interaction with police that day? Same objection, Your Honor. She's already asked that. I've asked it. All right. Excuse me. Um, Counsel, could you clarify the time that you're referring to? Sure. At the time that you were pulled over by the police with Mr. Wright, Dante, mm -hmm. based on your recollection, was the car running? Was it still on or was it off? It was running. Okay. Now, at some point after the car drove off, yes. you were removed, is that right? Yes. Do you, are you unclear today about when the, exactly the car was turned off? Yes. Okay, does that, is that what you're testifying to today? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. 